Today, Brother Rob has a message for us. His message is, atheism still sucks. If you don't know who Brother Rob is, well, it's not that important. I've done a couple videos on him, and he's probably one of my favorite people on YouTube. You will soon see why. So let's check out this video and see what Brother Rob has in store for us today. Good day, folks. Brother Rob with you here. So, um, so I want to talk about what the Bible says about atheists. Huh. Always a good start. You know, there's nothing that an atheist wants to hear more than what a book we don't believe in has to say about us. <laughs> you may say, you know, Rob, you are you kind of go hard on atheists and you go after them a lot. Well, for good reason. Um, one, they're fools, and two, they know they're lying. <laughs> okay, well, that's a nice start, Brother Rob. Isn't that a little bit harsh? Well, that's foolish, exactly, and... What are we lying about? Let's 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 cool it down a little bit, my guy. So, let's see what the Bible says about atheists. <clears throat> Psalm fourteen one. <clears throat> this is the first verse, as far as I know, that the Bible really deals <clears throat> directly with atheism. Psalm fourteen one. David speaking through the Spirit. The fool says in his heart, "There is no God. They are corrupt. They are abominable. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good." The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside, they have all together become corrupt. There is no one do, who does good, not one. I wonder if Christians who quote this Bible verse and Bible verses like that at atheists realize that that's just something a guy said. That's just something somebody said thousands of years ago that has no relevance at all to us in our lives. In fact, I could easily say the exact same thing, but about Christians, and it would be exactly as valid. And, and uh, Proverbs 1 7 says, <clears throat> The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right, now, and who's wiser than Brother Rob? Let's see what Paul has to say in Romans 1, starting at 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who suppress, uh, suppress the truth in unrighteousness because, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that were made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. I feel like I've said this a lot, but you know, in the end... What are we talking about here? Well, this is the Bible. What is the Bible? The Bible is a book, and that doesn't mean it's wrong, but when it comes to religion, everybody's got a book. The Catholics got a book, the Orthodox got a book, probably more than one, the Protestants got a book, the Jews got books, the Muslims got books, Hindus got books, everybody's got a book. And why should I think your book is more true than all the other books? I need some good reasons to believe that. You can quote your book at me all day. And that's fine and dandy. But if I'm going to believe it, I'm going to need some reasons to believe it over all the other ones. And the hard part is, you're not going to convince me by more words from that same book. You're going to have to find something outside that book that I find convincing. Because, again, without that, I have no reason to believe your book over all the other books. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and, exchange, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made by corruptible, like corruptible men, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. God, therefore God gave also them up to the uncleanliness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, to exchange the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against their nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for, you know, for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. Look at the glazed over look in Brother Rob's eyes. Look at the fanatical devotion you can see written all over him to this book. This book that he thinks is the word of God sent down to him from on high. To people like Rob, to Brother Rob himself, there isn't a need for any other book because this is the book. 
This is the only book that matters, and it's the only book they will ever read. And I can tell you, if they read some other books, they might find good reasons to not believe this book so much. Which is probably why they don't read other books so much. But of course, you know, all of this just seems like projection, doesn't it? Think about it like this. What happens in the Bible when the Israelites make it to Canaan? Well, they slaughter a bunch of people. They commit genocide, ethnic cleansing. There are all kinds of terrible crimes. I mean, they kill babies. They kill everybody. Now, we can all be glad that that never happened in real life. There's no evidence that uh, the Israelites were ever anything but an indigenous tribe to Canaan. They were already there, but this is an origin story that explains how they got there. It's fiction. It's, it's historical fiction. It's literary fiction. Did they know that? Uh, probably, at least at the beginning. But later on, that probably became like something they honestly believed. We wiped out the Canaanites. But I must point out that this verse talks about, these verses talk about people doing terrible things. What's worse than genocide and ethnic cleansing, which God commands? So... <clears throat> Paul says, basically, what atheists just do is suppress the truth and unrighteousness. He said that very clearly in uh, verse 18 of Romans 1. Uh, what I like about Romans 1 is it pretty much <clears throat> puts the pulse, a finger on the pulse of um, the human condition, <clears throat> where Paul just basically calls them all liars and fools, and rightfully so, because that's what an atheist is, a liar and a fool. I must note that Brother Rob has a chip on his shoulder. It should be apparent that if you're watching this, like, he has a chip on his shoulder. But let me explain why he has a chip on his shoulder. See, he came to YouTube and started doing videos about how bad atheism is and how bad atheists are. Not only that, he's on Twitter. And if you're on Twitter, well, you're probably crazy because Twitter is a crazy place. So, of course, he got in arguments with atheists on Twitter, especially well-known ones. He ended up debating some, including Aaron Ra. And yeah, that was a fascinating debate. And in that debate, he tried to like position himself as like the reasonable Christian, you know, uh, laughing at other people's folly and all that sort of thing. Uh, but in the end, it came out where he was like, you'll have to account for this one day. You'll have to account for all these things you're saying one day. The fundamentalist inside of Brother Rob could not wait to come out. Now, I don't know whether Brother Rob is really a Protestant or anything like that. He could be. I, I saw him holding up the Book of Mormon in another one. Maybe he's a Mormon. That would explain the whole Brother Rob thing. Not that fundamentalists don't do that as well. But, like, this guy, this guy is just fascinating because he comes on the Internet. Atheists just, you know, beat him half to death. The poor guy. And instead of just, like, walking away from the keyboard and being like, okay, maybe I should try something else. Maybe I should try learning more and working on my rhetoric skills and, and being more genuine. And maybe then I can come back and actually make a positive impact. Instead of doing that, he just decides, well, you know what? Fuck you, atheists. I'm going to just talk shit constantly and there's nothing you can do about it. So that's the path Rob has chosen. And I really think it would be better for him and everyone if he chose another path because I don't want to have to sit here and make fun of the guy over and over and just like explain how wrong he is about everything he believes. I don't want to have to do that. Now, if Brother Rob would go away for a while, read some books, study some rhetoric, learn how to speak, get a better webcam, I would be happy to actually really take him seriously, respond to him, do debates with him. I would love that. I would love nothing more than to see a successful apologist Rob. That would be great. But he's not doing that. He's just getting increasingly angry and bitter that atheists keep uh, just, you know, beating him half to death. And you will hear more about how atheists have beaten him half to death all over the place online as we proceed. <clears throat> and a coward, for that matter. Um, <clears throat> so you're suppressing what you know to be true. And... Exchange the truth of God for a lie. Now, what do we say with most atheists? The, the, their biggest contention with the Bible is, of course, the, the standard of human sexuality. One man. No, it's that it's not true. Um, yes, I think that the Bible is bad uh, when it comes to things like, you know, being gay. Because in the Bible, the penalty for being gay is being stoned to death. Brother Rob, 
Would you yourself volunteer to stone me to death because I've had gay relationships? Somehow I think the answer is no. If it were yes, well, that would kind of suck. I would say a lot about you, but not a lot about me. But the point here is, no, it's not about being gay or wanting to have sex. Those are all very human things, of course, and those are all fine. But that's not why I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist because I don't believe in God. Why don't I believe in God? Well, put simply, it just doesn't make any sense. But even if I did believe in God, it wouldn't be your God because as far as, you know, there isn't really evidence for God at all, not any kind of God that I can see. But let's assume there was. Would that mean it would be evidence for your God? Would I automatically assume because there's evidence for a God that it must be yours? Well, no, I wouldn't see any proof for that. You'd need proof for that. Proving God only gets you about halfway to your goal. You still have a long way to go, Brother Rob, but let's proceed. And one woman. It's always been the, being, the, the biggest contention for atheists. Um, but again, you know, I just I was briefly watching this video from R and Ra, uh, <laughs> that guy something else, and uh, he was talking about saying something stupid like uh, atheists um, know the Bible under the Old Testament better than Christians do. Well, as a matter of fact, we do. And let me explain. Let me explain, Brother Rob. So, I am the child of a fundamentalist minister. My family is the definition of a church family. These are some of the churchiest people. These are the people who say, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. Uh, that's the kind of people that are in my family, all across my family. I'm one of like, you know, two atheists in my immediate family, three atheists in my immediate family. And, uh, we are in the minority here. My dad is the most devout minister of all time. Uh, my mom, she she studies the Bible constantly. Uh, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any one of them on the Bible, Old Testament or New. I may not know the exact verses as well as they do. I may not be able to quote the exact lines as well as they do, but I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them on any part of the Bible because I have read it so much and been exposed to it so much. And these are like the high, high knowledge Christians, the ones who really know. These people really know their stuff. Most Christians don't. Most Christians are very casual, cultural kind of Christians that don't know. So yes, if I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my dad or my mom on Bible verses, there aren't many Christians out there who are going to be doing better than me. And I am not alone. This guy, of course, says Aaron Ra is stupid or whatever. He says stupid things. Yeah, that's one thing Aaron Ra is known for, saying stupid things. There's nobody dumber than Aaron Ra. And Brother Rob, the Einstein that he is, has revealed this staggering truth to us. No, Aaron Ra is right. Most atheists out there who came from Christian backgrounds know the Bible better than Christians. Beyond that, uh, regardless of like my Bible knowledge specifically, I can beat any family member, any, any, any one of them, on scholarship and theology. I am no expert on scholarship or theology, but I have read just enough that I can go against any one of them and no more. So if you want to ask who knows the most about the Bible in this family, it's me, by a long shot. And that's not being arrogant. They've admitted as much. And I assume people like R and Ra are very similar. Um, when it comes to like, you know, again, I saw him with a Book of Mormon, Brother Rob with a Book of Mormon. He may be a Mormon, I don't know. Uh, I tend to assume fundamentalist, but I could be wrong. If he is a Mormon, if he's not a Mormon, I am so into like religion and comparing them that ex-Mormons frequently, whenever I talk about Mormonism on this channel, ex-Mormons will tell me, I know Mormonism better than a great majority of Mormons do. So, you are wrong, Brother Rob. Atheists have every reason in a society dominated by Christianity to know a lot about Christianity. We have a vested interest in understanding it. These are allegedly the most important questions. Why wouldn't we want to understand them? Well, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Atheists don't know shit. <laughs> Atheists don't, even, don't, don't know the, the, the Old Testament. Maybe. I love how this guy's arguments just amount to, nuh uh uh-uh. Like, come on, Rob, you can do better than that. You, you gotta give us more than a nuh-uh. What's your evidence, Rob? Other than maybe the copy and paste typical bullshit 
crap they passed between them. That's why I said, <clears throat> I think, as far as I can see, the only thing that atheists have mastered in their lives is the ability to... Man, you could just call this guy Potty Mouth Rob at this point, because this guy, this guy curses almost as well as I do. I curse like a sailor, and this guy, this guy comes close to me. Rob, is this what the Lord would want from you? Is this behavior becoming of, of someone who is there to spread the love of Christ? I don't think so, my guy. You copy and paste each other's arguments because <laughs> they all say the same damn thing. There's no... That is a rich accusation coming from someone whose entire basis for his arguments is, well, the Bible says this. You are literally a copy and paste brain. The entirety of your knowledge is just copied and pasted from the Bible. Yes, atheists will use quotes from each other. We will use rhetoric from each other. But to say it's all copy and paste is just wrong. Originality in their, <clears throat> in their uh, arguments, it's all bullshit. Um, straw man, ad hominem, uh, deflection. Bait and switch. Uh, this is a big pot to kettle moment, isn't it, folks? Uh, begging the question, circular reasoning, you're like you name it. Atheists are, you know, use all of those fa fallacies on a very regular basis. Now, I'm not saying Christians don't ever use logical fallacies, but <clears throat> um, atheists use far more, especially ad hominem. <laughs> um, as soon as ad hominem is employed. Uh, it's game over for... Listen, Brother Rob, yes, uh, we'll use some ad hominems here and there. We'll say things that may make you mad. Because, yes, we are tired, very frequently, of dealing with people who don't want to learn. People who don't have an interest in understanding how things work. And, Brother Rob, by all accounts, you are one of those people. Accuse me of ad hominem if you wish, I don't particularly care. But the point is, we would not be at all doing ad hominems if you'd give us something good. When I'm doing videos on people who know their stuff, I'm not about to say, what a moron, like I would say about Brother Rob. If I am responding to somebody who knows their stuff and it seems reasonable and rational enough, even if I disagree with it, I am not about to say, this person is insane. If they say something that is insane, I think I have every right to say, this person is insane. I recently did a video where a guy said he has seen angels and heaven and hell for himself. That is insane. That may be an ad hominem. It may be an ad hominem to say, that is literal psychosis and you should check into a mental institute. But I think it's well earned in many cases. An ad hominem is just it's an indirect way of saying you've lost the debate without saying you've lost the debate because once you resort to <clears throat> an ad hominem attacks, you've ran out of argument. Brother Rob would know a lot about losing debates because the consensus from every debate he's been in is that he sucks at this. And that's not an ad hominem, that's just a cold hard truth, Brother Rob. Like good, like actual arguments. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, how many in the text always make one's position look weak and, uh... What, you mean like calling atheists fools and liars? That kind of ad hominem? You think that makes your position look weak, Brother Rob? Simply put, that's what, uh, the atheist clings to many a time is the ad hominem attacks. Um, so, so, you know, um... I mean, I don't have any personal qualms with atheism. My I have spent this entire video calling atheists fools, liars, stupid, accusing them of ad hominems and any other number of fallacies. And it's pretty clear I just despise atheists inside and out. But I don't have anything against them. Some, I assume, are good people. My hope is that they will turn of their, from their sin, repent um, from dead works, and give their lives to Jesus Christ. They may be saved. Well, prepare to be disappointed, Brother Rob. Saved. I mean, many atheists have been saved, and I believe that many were, will be more saved. And again, I don't believe there's any such thing as an actual atheist. Everybody knows. Look at look at this again. Listen to what Paul says in Romans one. Uh, 
And again, we are about to enter Assertion City. Paul says it, therefore it must be true. I think Christians very often forget that Paul was just a guy and not a very good one. Like Paul, he took part in the stoning of Christians before his conversion. Not only that, after his conversion, he was still kind of a jerk. He was jerk to the actual disciples of Jesus who literally knew him. Jesus told these people what their mission was, what he expected of them, what to do, and Paul just goes up to them like, nuh-uh. So I guess in that sense, uh, Paul and Brother Rob have a lot in common. Um, <clears throat> because although they knew God, this is Romans 1 verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful and became futile in their thoughts. Um, and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible, incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men, and birds and animals and four footed. So, in birds and four footed animals and creeping things, then God gave them up to the unclean lust and the lust of their hearts. So. How do we know that Paul is really talking about atheists here? I mean, to Paul, what would an atheist have been in the first place? There weren't exactly an abundance of people in the ancient world who didn't believe in any god. Uh, a great majority, an overwhelming majority of people would have been believers in gods. So I doubt Paul ever even met somebody who didn't believe in some kind of god. When he refers to heathens and non-believers, he's referring to the pagans. He's referring to the uh, Greco-Roman polytheistic religion, most likely. That's who Paul's opposition was. He probably didn't really, you know, have a lot to say about actual atheists as we think of it today. I mean, think about it like this. In the ancient world, when Christians were first, like, becoming a thing, when people first started to notice, hey, there are these guys, and they're really weird and believe really weird things, uh, the Roman authorities accused Christians of being atheists because they didn't believe in the Roman gods. So atheism uh, is not like what it used to be. What it was is not what it is. And I think when he refers to unbelievers, he was probably talking about that little dispute between, you know, the Jews and the Romans on the one hand and the Christians and the Romans on the other hand. That's probably what that was referring to. But of course, Brother Rob, the Bible expert, probably doesn't know that. God is giving you op and over to what you want <laughs> rather than what you need, which is him. So you exchange the truth. Prove that. Why do I need Jesus? What's he going to do for me? Is he going to do my taxes? Is he going to let me win the lottery? What's he going to do for me? Let's assume that Jesus does exist. What is he planning to do for me exactly? Because, you know, my life's pretty awesome. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to need, so if you want me to worship somebody, you're going to have to give me some good reasons. And I just haven't seen him yet. So he died for me on a cross? Well, so... I mean, that's great. Fantastic. They call it a gift. The Bible calls it a gift. It's a gift from God. That's great. You know, I've never had to do anything to get a gift. When people give me gifts, I just get them. That's how gifts work. If you have to do something for it, it's not really a gift, is it? So, you know, what, 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 why should I? Why should I uh, convert? Why should I believe? Tell me, Rob. Tell me. The God for a lie, and now you're paying the price. And now your rejection of God... To paraphrase what Paul said, it's not an intellectual issue, it's a moral issue. <laughs> it's always a it's always a moral issue. It's never here. Your rejection Well, of course, you know, the thing is, religious people are prone to the exact same things as non-religious people, as atheists. Because in the end, we're all human. It doesn't matter if you're washed in the blood of the lamb or not, because Plenty of people who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb still do terrible things. And, I mean, not just terrible things, but I mean, they also end up being gay. They also end up having extreme lust for women and sex. They, all, they end up being addicts. They end up, uh, you know, just all kinds of terrible and, like, neutral things that Christians consider to be terrible. Um, converting doesn't protect you from yourself. It just doesn't. Um... And I guess, you know, in some cases, some people do get better from it. I think you could probably make an argument that uh, Lee Strobel did get better as a person from Christianity, but he should have probably just gone to therapy, you know? Probably should have just gone to therapy. And, and people like this, and they assume that atheists are miserable. I'm a pretty happy person. 
I mean, I'm probably one of the happiest people in the family. Um, I used to be depressed a lot, but as I've gotten older, that kind of went away. I'm a happy person. I like life. I love life. I'm in love. It's great. Um, I'm going on vacation. It's going to be great. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying doing YouTube stuff for all of you. Uh, life is good, Brother Rob. What exactly is the improvement going to be here? No, I tell you what it is. People like Brother Rob are scared because they know that their own lives are empty and hollow without this religious stuff. What bothers Brother Rob the most is that atheists exist in the first place because that says there are people out there who don't need God to be happy, complete, fulfilled, whole people. Unlike Brother Rob. The question of God is never intellectual because it's not an intellectual, it's not a smart and intelligent thing to do to reject your creator or, or his um, commands. I assure you, Brother Rob, I have not rejected my parents. Okay, that's kind of a lie. It depends on which parents we're talking about here. I got two sets. Um, this whole thing is just silly, though. I, I, I gotta say, Brother Rob, you're not making great art. You know, one thing that always strikes me about videos like this is just this. So let's say that I weren't a hardcore atheist. Let's say I'm just a, a filthy casual. Maybe I don't really care about religion. Maybe I'd be open to converting to it. Maybe if you give me the right information, I'd just, I'd be like, you know what? Maybe he is right. Maybe I should. Let's assume I were that kind of person instead of a militant atheist and skeptic. Uh, would stumbling upon Brother Rob's videos convince me that, yes, these Christians are great, that the Christians are doing great, they're all mentally healthy, very happy people, loving, kind, generous people? Would watching Brother Rob convince me I should be a Christian? Well, hell no. I'd probably be running the other way. To live how he instructs you to live. You know, and a lot of people think that, you know, well, God just wants to rain in your parade. No. God just wants you to live within the boundaries of human flourishing as he designed it. Now, God's intent for human, human flourishing is one man and one woman in marriage. Okay, I've got that down. What next? And, man, you're supposed to be the leader of your house which means you serve in love. That's how you lead, by serving and demonstrating and um, being an example. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not sure about that. That sounds kind of, uh, you know, misogynist to me, my guy. I don't need to head a household. When I think of, like, a partnership, a romantic relationship, I think of equality. I think we both have things to give. We both have things to help each other out with. Why should I uh, be domineering? Why should I dominate her? Why should I be in control of her in some way? Is, not, is she not a person herself with her own interests and ideas and dreams? Who am I to say, no, you have to listen to me? We don't do that to each other. We have the kind of relationship where we talk. We talk everything out and we come to agreements. We compromise. That's what we do. That's the healthy way to do it. And I kind of wonder, you know, is Rob even married? Does Rob have a wife in the first place? Is he divorced? It's, I don't hear him talk about his wife, do you? It's just a little bit curious, isn't it? It's being sacrificial, hardworking, um, love your wife, give yourself up for your wife. And also the other thing, too, is when you're married, you... Okay, so far, so good. I guess I'm a Christian, huh? Are supposed to give up yourself sexually to your spouse. Okay, let's not talk about the lewd stuff now. Let's not get disgusting with this, all right? Let's not, let's keep the Pornhub stuff out of this one, okay, Rob? Chill out, my guy. Holding sex from your spouse for a prolonged period of time is uh, cruel and uh, sinful and... Hold up. Okay, okay, okay. Wait one second here. Wait, just... I gotta, I gotta parse this in my brain, okay? I gotta... What did he just say? Did I hear that correctly? I think I heard that correctly. He was saying that withholding sex from your spouse is bad. Um, sure, Brother Rob, uh, whatever. But here's the thing. That is oddly specific, isn't it? Don't you kind of feel like he's talking about his own? Maybe he does have a wife. Maybe he's on the internet talking shit about atheists because he can't get laid. Maybe his wife is withholding from him and he's angry about it. Brother Rob, go to counsels therapy. Go get a marriage counselor. 
Don't take it out on us. What did we do? Uh, weird, really, too. <sighs> no, you know, Paul talks about that, too, but I'm not getting to that. But I want, what I want to just focus on is that just the utter... I've said this before, and I'll say it again, but I think, like I said, you know, Ray Comfort's really done a good job of exposing just how morally bankrupt people are without any, 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 any knowledge that are admitted to or own it. I mean... Ray Comfort is a joke if you ask the average person if you, if you do you think you're a good person most people will say yes and they are right most people are good people they try their best they try their hardest they don't always succeed but at least they're trying and then if you ask them have you ever lied yes have you ever still on your something irrespective of its value yes have you ever looked at someone plus yes um okay well then according you may as well just ask have you ever been human because, yes, uh, those things are things that humans do. We make mistakes. What matters isn't whether we make mistakes or not. Nobody is perfect. It's how do we deal with those mistakes? Do we try to make it right? Do we try to make sure we don't keep making the same mistakes? Do we evolve as people or do we just hand it all off to Jesus and say, ah, he'll take care of it? According to the Bible, you're uh, lying, stealing, adulterous at heart, and you're not good, you're self-righteous, you're in claiming to be good, you're, you're not, you're, that's also a lie, you're self-righteous, because you're, you're sinful just like the rest of us, so, and then... Good is a spectrum, isn't it? I mean, we can't all be Fred Rogers, that's certainly true, he was a spectacular human being. Um, but thankfully, we can all do our best to not be Brother Rob. And again, after Ray's asked them those questions, and they've been honest with him and in, in, in his discourse with of it with them he asked them do you still think you're a good person and to my amazement most people will still say yes because most people recognize that that's just being human that humans make mistakes and you can be a good person while making mistakes just because you have told a lie every now and then does not make you a liar for example Let's say you're hiding a Jewish person in your basement and the Nazis come over. They say, do you have a Jewish person in the basement? You say, well, no, of course not. I hate the Jews. That's going to get the Nazis out the door, hopefully, and you're going to save a life. Was that bad saying that? Was it bad to lie to the Nazis? Would that person be a liar? I mean, technically they did tell a lie. They might have to do that a lot if they're in that situation. Are they a liar? Is that itself a bad thing? Likewise, thievery. Let's say your child is starving and you can't find anything. But you know what? There's a Safeway right down the street or Wegmans or whatever you have in your area. There's a Safeway, Wegmans, whatever, right down the street. And uh, they got plenty of food. So you just, you know, maybe take something. That's certainly not a good thing. It is theft, but... You're doing it for something greater than yourself. You're not just doing it to do it. You're not just doing it because you can. You're doing it to feed a child, your child. Does that make it right? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to debate the morality of that. But does that make you a terrible, irredeemable thief because you stole something to, fed, to feed your child? Isn't that very different than, let's say, stealing something to sell it just because you can? These are very different things. These things are conditional. If I am faithful to my wife, let's say, if, if my wife and I have a monogamous, stable relationship, and then I see someone hot, and I think, wow, that person is hot. Am I an adulterer? Well, no. Is it probably good to do that a lot? Well, probably no. Um, but does that make me less loyal to her? Also, no, that doesn't make a person adulterous. Let's say you go even further than that. I'm not going to say I'm going further than that. I don't want to do that. But let's say you do. Let's say you you have a beautiful wife, husband, whatever. You love them very much, but maybe like things have gotten a little bit dry lately. So you go out and you do something you end up regretting, as happens every now and then. Let's say that happens. You do it once. You feel very bad about it. You come clean about it. You go to like marriage counseling, marriage therapy, and your relationship is strong after that. You never do it again. 
And till death do us part is till death do us part. You're together until the very end. Are you an adulterer? Have you done something that is fundamentally unforgivable if it is indeed forgiven and you changed your ways? Now, I would obviously not encourage anyone out there to cheat on their spouse or partner. That is a bad thing to do. But it's not past the point of redemption in a lot of cases. Now, every case is going to be different. Some spouses might have this happen and just be like, well, I'm done with this. Goodbye. I'll never see you again. In that case, that's bad. There's probably not much you can do to help that situation. But maybe in the next relationship, you've learned your lesson. You're not going to do that. That's what being human is about. As long as you're doing good, trying to do good, trying to learn from your mistakes, I think you're probably a good person. Not everyone, but a lot of most people will still say yes. And there is, well, you know, when it comes to like lying or lusting or stealing, of course, the common question is, well, who hasn't done those things? But that's a horrible way to think that you're a good person. You think you're a good person just because you're you're just as guilty as the next person? That's a horrible way to... to, to I don't think that's what people are saying, but okay. Think about your own self that... Just because. No, like the terrible way to think about your own self is that you're irredeemable and deserve hellfire because you looked at a woman and thought, damn, she's hot. Because, so if everyone else had raped or stolen or, you know, <laughs> done more, more, way more horrible things than just that, then you said, well, you know, or maybe I haven't raped, so I'm not that bad. Well, according to who? That's the question, right? What's, where's the standard? Well, technically, uh, you know, if you haven't raped somebody... You are better than a rapist, which, you know, you may not be the best person ever, but at least you're not a rapist. If your standard is the average person, well then, whose standard, by what, if you're a good person, by whose standard? Mother Teresa or Hitler, right? <clears throat> Most people think we're somewhere in the middle, you're somewhere in the middle, but according to God... I am not in the middle of Mother Teresa or Hitler, and in fact, from what I understand, Mother Teresa was actually fairly close to Hitler in a whole lot of ways. Um, now I know Catholics would want to like kill me for saying that, but it's true. Uh, so thankfully I'm not between those. In fact, I am well outside of that. Uh, I'm somewhere between like, you know, uh, probably Mr. Rogers and Carl Sagan. So, you know, just, I'm, I'm between decent people, essentially. I assume Carl Sagan was decent. I'm somewhere between... Decent people will say. Carl Sagan may be a weird example, but, you know, I look up to him a lot, so whatever. I'll let it slide. You're morally bankrupt. You see, that's the thing that the atheist, or most people for that matter, can't think, seem to wrap their head around. Just... That's the thing most people don't understand, that they're morally bankrupt because I say so. Fantastic argument, Brother Rob. Really great stuff. You're not a good person. In fact, you're a morally depraved, wicked, vile, evil person without God. And when people start talking like this, I start to think, well, I hope they don't have guns. And you deserve to be thrown in hell and burn in a lake of fire forever. Now Holy, wow, that escalated quickly. Let's see if it continues. As do I. No. Terrible way to think about yourself, Brother Rob. <clears throat> if that <clears throat> rubs you the wrong way, <clears throat> that means you haven't come to the reality of your own condition yet and you're lying to yourself and you're beating yourself deceived now if that offends you i really don't give a shit to be blunt <laughs> but uh well i thank you for being blunt you know you've been so circumspect to this point brother rob but i think we're going to call it here for now i would like to do more on this video uh there is still more time like this we're, we're only about halfway through it i guess i had a lot to say in this one but I think you can see, uh, Brother Rob is not well. Um, I don't know what to say about Brother Rob anymore. When I first encountered Brother Rob, I kind of like, I'm, I mean, I'm fascinated with him, but like, he was obviously kind of strange, uh, but he didn't seem too terrible. And now it's kind of like, is Brother Rob losing his mind? Is Brother Rob about to just go full Joker? And I got to say, he has a good face for it. Uh, if he went full Joker, that'd be terrifying. He might be the only, like, full Joker makeup guy that could make it as scary as, like, some of the movies. Um, is that where we're going? Is Brother Rob about to become Brother Joker? Well, 
We can certainly hope not, because he does seem kind of dangerous at times, doesn't he?